Hi, I'm Old Norse Specialist Dr. Jackson Crawford, and today I just want to talk to you briefly about the kind of bizarrely unrelated words for and in English and its closest relatives, the Germanic languages. Anyone who knows any two Germanic languages, whether those be English, Old Norse, Swedish, German, Dutch, Yiddish, whatever, knows that much of the vocabulary is closely related. And, of course, that makes sense since these languages were all probably one speech community less than about 2,000 years ago. Just like the Romance languages were. But it's surprising to see how different the words for and are between the three major branches of Germanic. East Germanic, including Gothic, North Germanic, which is Old Norse and the modern Scandinavian languages, and West Germanic, which is the rest, English, German, Dutch, etc. Now in East Gothic, the branch that we have the earliest long attested text from, that's Gothic, the word for and is ja. Now this probably reflects Proto-Germanic ja, yes, plus hua, which is the cognate to que, and in Latin, so and yes. <laughs> now curiously, this is actually borrowed into uh, Estonian and Finnish as the word for and, ja, in those languages today, and ja in some Sami dialects even, so unrelated Uralic languages borrowed a word for and from uh, either Gothic or an ancestral stage or, or an ancestral stage of perhaps uh, other Germanic languages when this use of ja to mean and was more common. But in West Germanic, what we see instead is forms descended from Proto-Germanic anthi, which is cognate with Latin ante, meaning before, Greek anti, meaning against, anti, of course, comes from that. Here we see, for instance, English and, version n, Dutch n, German und, all from that original root. Now, this is not used in Scandinavian as the main and word, but it does have a descendant word in Scandinavian that's related, and that's n, meaning yet or still in Old Norse, and then it's shortened form n, meaning and, with a contrastive sense, right? Um, uh, so and so is my sister, and so and so is my brother. There's a there's a contrast there between sister and brother. Uh, but it's not the main word for and in Scandinavian. By the way, note that modern Scandinavian men, meaning but, is not descended from n, but from Old Norse medon, meaning while. Now, what is the Old Norse word for and? It's ok, or uh, at an earlier stage, including in runic inscriptions, and uh, often we can assume it in some poetry, auk. Now, if you know German, this may be familiar because it looks a lot like German, auch also. But this is also cognate with English ik, uh, also in something like Chaucer or pretentious later poets. So it's just curious to me, I, I just wanted to draw some attention to this, how different these words for and are, and uh, why exactly that should be is kind of a mystery. You don't often see that. The Romance languages have uh, closer related words for and. Um, you know, who, who knows why exactly this was. Related, of course, to that Gothic word for and is the word for yes. Now, in Gothic, we see ja or ja, yeah. an old Saxon ja. Old High German, ja, Old English, ye, which becomes English, ja, yeah, and Old Frisian, ye. One thing that's kind of curious about this that I'll just mention while we're talking about these words is that Old Norse has yo, which of course looks closely related to these other forms, but it doesn't make sense from the history of Old Norse where any word that began with ya in Germanic becomes, uh, it, or drops that j, right? So English year is cognate with Old Norse, or, Old Norse, unger, is cognate with English, young. That y sound always drops, but it doesn't in this word. Why? A little bit of a mystery. Uh, Oxel Kolk suggested that it was because it was technically an enclitic word in Proto-Germanic. I don't know if we can support that very well, and I'm not sure that it really solves the problem. But it's interesting. Well, I hope that was an interesting or informative quick look at this question for you. And uh, I hope that uh, if you enjoy these videos, that you'll consider 
checking out my Patreon to help me continue to make them for free in beautiful places, uh, such as here high in the snowies of Wyoming. For now, from beautiful Wyoming, I'm wishing you all the best.